Hello, my name is Jerry and welcome to my short video. This video is a pre-teaching bit, bit of information for a class I will be teaching online. The event is Sparkly and Shiny Goes to Burka, an online arts and sciences event. It is hosted by the Barony of Stone March in the northern region of the East Kingdom. This particular class is about making a simple dress fastener just like this one, or a set of them. Basically, there is an example of this in Britain, and it's been dated to about the 16th century. Uh, this class is going to be basically duplicating that dress fastener and making a pair of them. The one listed that was found is a copper alloy, which probably means brass, uh, I have chosen to do the center part in copper because I like the uh, distinctive look of the two metals. So that's what we're making. And I should note that all the links that I mention or things I talk about, including citations, there will be links in the Facebook post and also in the YouTube description for this video. So, to get started, uh, I'm working on my dining room table, not at my bench. This is a class for people who are just starting out and beginning to make jewelry. So, first thing you need, and this should be your first piece of equipment you buy, a fire, fire extinguisher. You always have one on hand, always, 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 no exceptions. Uh, the second thing you need would be a pair of goggles or glasses that fit over your glasses uh, because eye protection is very important and you want to make sure nothing flies up and gets in your eyes, um, especially if it flies up fast, which it can. I'm not recommending hearing protection for this particular project because I don't think we're going to be making enough noise with it to where it warrants hearing protection. Uh, if you have other thoughts on that, leave notes for me in the comments, leave comments, and we'll discuss it. Uh, you also need an apron, uh, because when you drop stuff, you want it to land in the apron and not in your clothing or on the floor. And if you have something like soda or coffee or whatever, you make sure that there is a cover for it. Now, our work surface... Uh, since I'm on my dining room table, I don't want to mess that up. So, what I have is a 2x2 two two foot uh, plywood board that's half inch plywood that I've coated with the earth thing. About, about four coats. Now, uh, that's pretty much what we need to get started for safety and a work surface. So, let's get started going down the list of everything else. Uh, to do the project itself, you need a piece of 10 gauge uh, brass and a piece of 14 gauge brass. So you can see here the two different gauges. You can get those in a lot of different places. Uh, you don't need much, like on a foot, foot and a half of each is more than enough. Uh, you also need copper wire. Uh, I am going to be using 24 gauge and I know that I need about 100 centimeters of this so uh, make sure you get a roll where you have 100 centimeters uh, if you use a thinner wire such as 28 gauge uh, you probably need probably double that so 200 centimeters so make sure you plan accordingly if you use thicker wire you need less but be aware that thicker wire will be a little harder to twist around and it's going to be a little tougher on your fingers. Now, uh, to start the actual production of that, you're going to need to be cutting stuff, so you need a bench pin. This one is a commercial bench pin that you can buy with a clamp. You can just clamp it under the edge of your uh, work surface or however you want to attach it. Uh, you do want to put a little groove in there because you're going to be filing the brass and you want a little groove 
to fit your brass into. You can also use a scrap piece of wood and just any old C clamp. That works too. That one's a little fancier. Uh, let's see, the next item is you need a way to mark your metal so you can cut it. Basically, you need a ruler to measure with. I'll be giving all the measurements in um, millimeters and centimeters. And a uh, fine tip uh, Sharpie marker so you can make a fine line so you know where to cut your metal. Okay. After that, you need three items. You need a flat, flat bladed, just regular set of pliers which work very nicely. You need, because you're bending hooks on this stuff, you need round jawed pliers. And you need a way to cut your metal. So uh, you can use small nippers like this that are jewelry nippers. And the ladies all here so you can see them. Uh, jewelry nippers work fine, or you can just use uh, electrical dikes. Um, electrical cutters that they use in a regular regular electrical work for wiring homes and stuff. Uh, most garages will have a set if you have a garage. Uh, you will need to be hammering a little bit on this to make sure these pieces are flat once you get them ready uh, to put together and also to flatten the metal a little bit here and you'll be flattening the edges of your pieces so they don't roll around quite so much. You see this one's very flexible, which is not necessarily bad, it's just I did not realize that the images I had, uh, I suspect these were flattened so they wouldn't roll around as much. So you need a polished hammer. And see how polished that is? Very polished. You should be able to shave in your hammer because this is for non-ferrous metals. Anything that touches a non-ferrous metal, you need to be highly polished. Uh, same thing with your bench block, though this one is not quite polished up yet. It's getting there. You need that to be very shiny. So once you have your bench block and your pliers, what you need are sanding sticks. And I have links on how to make these. Uh, I'm suggesting three sets, uh, 220, 400, and 600 grit. You can take and find the instructions on how to make those in the links. I have a uh, post about that on my blog. You also uh, need a file. You can get away with a 200 grit sanding stick to round the ends and make your points on these, but a file works much better. This is a really, really old file from my garage, so that's why it's so horrible looking, is because I picked it up used somewhere. But uh, that should work fine. So I'm purposely using tools that are easy to find or that you might have. Now, in a perfect world, this metal, when you get it, will be perfectly annealed and it will be dead soft and easy to bend. But this is not a perfect world. Chances are it's going to be half hard or hard and you're going to need to anneal the metal. So what you need is several items. You will need a uh, fire brick or just a regular brick if it's thicker. Something that's going to take the heat. A fire brick you can pick up at most hardware stores. You need something to hold some water because once you heat up your metal, once you heat up, here, let's do it like this. Once you heat up your metal to anneal it, you'll need to put it in in the water to quench it. So uh, you'll need that. Uh, that's what the pan is for. Some people will use glass. I recommend a small metal pan if you have it, and tweezers. You don't pick up hot metal. You will pick up your stuff with tweezers and put it in the water to quench. I'm not going to worry about uh, fire scale and stuff at this point because you're probably not going to have very much because you will be using a small butane uh, torch. If you have a propane torch, 
that works too. Uh, I've been trying to use this torch because they're fairly safe. You can refill them and they're really hard to not use properly. Uh, basically, that's everything you need for the class. Uh, watch my uh, videos on my blog and uh, you know, basically watch the videos on my blog uh, and that should explain everything you need. Look at my Facebook album and look at some pictures and get some ideas and I look forward to speaking with you and teaching you how to do something fun and new at a sparkling shiny ghost burka. Thank you very much and you have a good day.